Hi, folks. Such a dramatic entrance. Uh, where to begin? Uh, I wanted to touch base a little bit on first aid. And it's this isn't going to be a this is how you do certain things to take care of yourself or a loved one. It's more of a knowledge and product sharing uh, video. Uh, I did a video a while back and all it was basically was uh, comparing, I had a Pelican case and a, a Nanak case actually. And it was a big orange case we used for first aid. When Kasha and I took the kids out, we went off traveling and it was the only one I had. So I basically always had it in the back of the trip. And I uh, went through it all and you know, if I was out with my buddy Greg, one of my Marine buddies that you guys might remember, um, we, I'd just throw it in the back of the truck. We always had it. Um, I went from the Nanak to Pelican after uh, Pelican kind of um, helped me out one year, kind of sponsored me a little bit and got me some things. And um, it was really cool then to, you know, kind of support me when I was starting up and all that. So I uh, did that and I turned that Pelican case into a first aid kit. And then I actually did a giveaway and I gave away the Nanak. Uh, fast forward a few years now, uh, a lot of things have changed. And I thought, well, one of the things I wanted to do is share with you what gave us inspiration to not only build a first aid kit, but um, what to put in it and uh, what to look for under certain types of situations. Um, I have no affiliation with any of the products that you're going to see here anymore. There is absolutely nothing that I get other than if I do have links down below in, uh, uh, down below in the description box on Amazon. If you use that link, I will get a percentage off of it. Maybe I'll get five cents or 20 cents, who knows? Amazon is pretty finicky about all that stuff and most of the time I don't get anything. But I'm definitely willing to share it all with you and help you with your knowledge and get something going. The first thing we did is when we ultimately started looking at wanting to build um, a first aid kit for not only the truck, but also our house, is we end up getting this, uh, the Survival Medical Handbook. Uh, Dr. Joseph Alton, um, it did this Amy Alton, uh, she was a, uh, uh, she's a nurse practitioner, and um, uh, his wife, they created this book. I wanna say, well, this is probably uh, the Doom and Bloom series and stuff. I gotta say this book is probably all but 10 years old. Yeah, 2013. Uh, and I got this book probably its first year when it came out. I probably had this in 2014. So we started reading different things about what to get. You read the book front to back. Um, Dr. Alton gives you some really good ideas and insights of why you should choose certain things. So I highly recommend for many of you that even if you want to do just a first aid kit for your home, um, a lot of you guys that follow me and do stuff, uh, you go camping like we did and, and overlanding and such. This also helped us develop our kits for that. Now what I'm going to show you is going to be several different sizes and options. And first and foremost, I got to say, work on your budget. Uh, we did that for quite a while and our kit actually took us quite a bit to add to throughout the years as well as then um, we tailored it to our family at the time when we started creating it. And you'll see what I mean by that when I show you some of the items. Uh, but the first thing is, I want to share with you is the first thing that I use. I've been carrying it with my backpack, kind of like my little, you know, get home type bag and everything. I always kept the backpack in my trucks because as I traveled around or did something with the kids, I wanted to have a backpack with me for like boo-boos and stuff like that, as well as just in case I broke down and I had to walk home. This is the first one. This one I have had for, like I said, better part of at least 10 years. I got this, I want to say from, I think Croger, Fred Meyer, kind of Smiths, whatever might be around by you. Uh, I got this from them and I actually added to it. And in this pack, you're going to see, I got my little, I got a little thing of quick cloth and I got some water purifying and such, some scissors. I've got a variation of some band-aids. I have ibuprofen and aspirin. Aspirin's always a good thing to have because you can give it to people that are having heart issues. Ibuprofen, well, that's the marine in me. You know, what What can't ibuprofen fix, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I get stuff in here like uh, uh, like glue adhesives and things of that nature. It's a uh, liquid skin. 
Uh, basically, you, you crack this open and you, it's almost like a, um, a, a super glue in a, of a sense. Um, chapsticks and, and uh, the uh, hand sanitizers and stuff. But this was created just basically for me to have with me and the kids. That was all it was. Or if I'm out with my, by myself or with a buddy, I at least got something. Um, I can't say what this would cost because again, this case has been around for a long time. It's a lifeline product. Um, I don't know where they're made or their history or anything. Uh, if I find that out, I will leave the links down below again in the description for everything I show you. But most of this is from your basic Walmarts and your, your sporting goods supply stores and stuff like that. The important thing is, is to uh, suit, uh, basically tailor this to suit your needs. And this was my everyday carry. This was always in my truck. It was always in my backpack no matter where I went. Even if I went with Greg and we took his truck, I'd grab my backpack, I would throw it in his truck. Now we have two boo-boo bags. But this is really nice for people that want to have something in their vehicle that are on a budget. This is the best thing to start out with. Something super simple. Tylenols, ibuprofen. If you have young children, you're going to have some of the, you know, the, chew the chewable stuff for kids. You're going to want to go along those lines. But this is basically what I kind of started out with when I started preparing and doing stuff for first aid. Now, this bag here, this is actually my, out of my dad's truck, and this was a bag that he also got. I think he got this from Wally World a while back. But what you're gonna see here, it's kind of neat because of how it zips open. And I do believe they still make bags like this. This is the next step up from what you've seen there on, uh, that I had. Again, he's got a whole bunch of things in here, a lot of this stuff. And the reason I wanted to show you this kit is this kit comes with a lot of stuff already added to it. <laughs> Um, it comes with these little containers right here. So you've got your bandages, you've got your gauze, you've got some tapes and stuff like that. He's got one loose here. Okay, he's added like a triple antibiotic and a little reflector mirror. Uh, but I did want to show you because of the fact that I was familiar because these these bags like this, they come already pre-packed for you. Individual wrapped aspirins and Tylenols and ibuprofens or acetaminophens different types of antibiotics and stuff like that. Um, some scissors, a little pencil and tweezers and things of that nature. Um, what's really neat is this one, it lets you go ahead and tailor to whatever you need. So you can actually take these apart, reuse them and make them fit your need for your family. If you have somebody that needs to have uh, um, EpiPens and such, you could add those to these bags. If you think, hey, I don't want this big thing or there's something happening, you can rip this out and go do whatever you have to do to lend the first aid to maybe a child that scraped and fell and so on. There are so many options out there now. Again, I'm not going to be talking about this product is better for you than that product, nothing like that. It's to get you thinking a little bit. You might think, hey, I got this or I got that in my kit, but wow, what Chad had was pretty cool. Like for instance, my daddy always liked the, uh, the murine, the, uh, like a Visine type stuff for your eyes. Uh, especially if people that are in allergy season, you like those kind of things. Again, he's got a lot of boo-boos, he's got a little bit of gauze in here and stuff like that, ace bandages, antiseptic wipes, um, you know, he's got this little tincture that's got already a, um, a, like an iodine type solution on it. Those are really good for disinfecting and cleaning out scrapes and, and bumps and bruises, as well as if you have maybe some really bad slivers or something like that. Here's like the, the the uh, P red or something like PRD. It's actually a drawing salve. Um, I grew up with stuff like this, and it's it's really super simple and easy. Uh, it does not have a shelf life. A lot of stuff doesn't. You'll find that sometimes your bandages, the adhesive, will actually dry up after a while and they won't adhere uh, as well. But the actual bandage itself is fine. Um, stuff like this is really good, like iodines and such. They might have a date on them, but believe me. I've used stuff way past its expiration date and it push come the shove, you're going to be happy that you had something like that. But a drawing staff is really good, especially from my experiences is when I work here in the shop and with wood, if you get a sliver or something embedded in your skin and you can't get it out, um, you put this on there and this PRD, this, this basically this drawing salve is like an antiseptic and it also helps get that product, that little item that's in, 
in and buried in your skin, it actually helps it get it up out of your skin so you can remove it later on. It does take a few days, but it's actually a really good product. Uh, so I would that would be something I would say it might be a good idea to go with. Oh, I'm just, everything's falling apart a lot. Okay, now the next box, this one, and I might as well show you this one. These two right here are pretty new to me. Uh, this one here is for Ruby. This one here is for Ben's uh, Jeep that uh, I actually bought this for him and I helped him kind of fill it a little bit. He still has this tag on there because I wanted him, I wanted to leave it on there so I at least had a name or some information. But these cases are the Apache. And I got both of these from uh, Harbor Freight. They're something that they keep in stock at your store. They come in different colors. They're orange, they're yellow, they have greens, they have tan, they have black. I like the orange because of the fact that it, it just screams first aid. Uh, orange or yellow. Uh, what's really nice about these, this is called the 3800, this is the 2800. As you see, just size-wise, you can see the differences. Again, no horse in the race. I really like these, they're very durable. Matter of fact, I think they're a little overkill when it comes to a first aid box. But considering the Pelicans and the Nana cases that I had in the past, these, I, I was so happy to go with it. Uh, give you an example of what's in Ben's. Again, he has a little pouch. I bought these off of Amazon a while back and I'll put them in the, the down below. Um, we made these up for him, so he's got a little finger splint for if you end up with a broken finger, or something like that, tape, a little bit of gauze, uh, some of the Coban wrap. If you ever heard of Coban, it's a really cool wrap and it actually adheres on itself. It's kind of flex, uh, stretchy and it works really good for wrapping compression bandages and stuff on themselves. Um, and then there's some tape inside there and just regular bandages. We have in both of these, uh, this here actually is more for burns. And if you've gone out camping and such and you've had some issues, which I have had in the past, where you get burnt while you're at a campsite or you're out in the woods doing something, having something that has a lidocaine, uh, something that you can use for sterile, kasha, and I have these little, um, it's like a, basically a, uh, um, an IV solution inside a pen, uh, and they use those to uh, clean out um, lines, drip lines, and stuff like that. We use them also because it's, it's completely sealed and it's sterile. You can use it to irrigate a wound and clean stuff up and then use burn ointments and apply those. Um, many of you guys know, you know, none of us will ever want to probably see a mask in our entire life, but I have a mask in here. There's two in here actually, and that's simply because of the fact we do live, we have lived for the better part of 20 some years around volcanoes. We still do to this day, but also the fact fires, the huge thing is fires that we've always been around. A lot of us have been out camping and overlanding and such, and you get smoke around us. I was out camping one time in 2019 with a bunch of folks with the Coyote Works crew and the smoke just got so bad that when we left it, it was just horrible. This area, the wind shifted and we were in it. If you got stuck someplace where you're like that, you're going to want some type of face covering to keep that soot and that ash out of your lungs. Also yes, if, if you were under a COVID type situation like last time and nobody's going to let you in this place without a mask, okay you got one, there you go. Not my cup of tea, this is for the forest fires, this is for the volcano type stuff that you might be around and have to ash look at the people in Iceland and Greenland and such the last couple of decades. Um, these things would be very useful. Um, gloves, we do the gloves all the time because sometimes if you're out you're doing things, uh, if somebody gets hurt and you're dirty just like they are, if you have an opportunity to render first aid, it's easier to throw a, pair, a couple pairs of gloves on than it is to actually try to disinfect your hands. You throw some gloves on, it doesn't matter if your hands are dirty, the gloves will help protect you. Uh, we have a lot of this kind of stuff, the Lifesaver water filter systems, this is the straw. It's kind of self-explanatory, Ben just has that in there for having it. Um, a splint for fractures and twists and breaks and stuff like that. I've got one in Ben's, I've got one in mine as well. These are super cool, you get these off Amazon, I'll try to get these down below. Um, space blanket, these are great for people that are in shock, not just for trying to stay warm in an emergency situation. This is a little bit of a heavier duty one. People say a space blanket would work great, but if you ever held, held those little mylar ones that you get from, you know, they're in the little camping supply section stuff, they're really thin or flimsy and they don't hold up as well. Um, 
These on the other hand, it's a little bit thicker one. There's no name on it. If I remember, I'll try to put something down below. They make one a little bit bigger than this and they're really nice and durable. Um, I just don't know if, uh, I don't think I have any in this kit. I'd have to see as we go through this all, but really nice and helpful. Um, we got this, it's the Dermaplast. It's the first aid, it's basically an antibacterial spray. Clean out the scrapes to your kids, the boo-boos, all that kind of stuff. This works perfectly. But last in this one, um, feminine hygiene products. No, this isn't a plug gun shot wounds. This is not why I'm showing you this. Even though, yes, you can do such a thing, those gals that are in your life would definitely appreciate it if somebody forgot or ran out when you're out doing things. That's what this is for. That's all it's for. Yes, if you got a gunshot wound or something, okay, great, then, then use it, okay? But that's not what this is for. I have two women in my family and we go out for days or a week at hand. And if something comes up and they're not prepared, at least you got something inside your first aid kit to help them out. Okay, now mine, real quickly, since we already went through Ben's, there's not a whole lot different to show you again. Here's one of those little masks. This is something from Home Depot from back in the day. You guys might remember those. Um, some of the different things with mine and with Ben's. Here's one of the big, here's one of those big ones right there. It's a uh, Essentials uh, emergency sleeping bag. It's a uh, um, emergency sleeping bag. So it's not the actual, just a blanket, it's a bag. You can wrap around, but it's a lot thicker material. Um, I have in mine, I have a flare. It's a single use flare. Um, we have a bunch of these laying around. I think I might have one out my truck and I think Kasha has got one in her Jeep. Um, simple, if you're out like we were and you need help, you got a flare. We use an inReach system by Garmin. We have that and we also pay for our annual um, uh, insurance for getting extraction out of an area that we might not be able to drive out of. But if they're looking for you, and or maybe you're in an area and they might be looking past you, this flare will help. Uh, this is my water for purification. It's emergency only. It's got the little Sawyer in here with a uh, plunger that is used to clean the filter system. Um, I have a tourniquet. I have a basic good old fashioned cat tourniquet right here. I do a lot of shooting. I go out with the guys, especially when I was out with Greg and Rui and some of the other folks. We were out shooting. It was always nice to have. Headlamps, always a plus. I absolutely love headlamps and can't go wrong with them. I have my splints in here. I have my feminine hygiene in here. What I also have in here is a dental repair kit. And I got this off of Amazon. I know you can get these uh, at some local camping stores. Um, this is great for if you end up with like a, a filling that falls out or something, or you get a fractured tooth. This actually has a bunch of product in there that you can do to help fix that up at least temporary to get you home and then see a dentist. I got a pair of shears. These are always great. You know, I like these versus some other kinds of scissors. They just hold up a lot better and they're not that expensive. The bivy, this is a sole escape bivy. Now I've had this for at least 12 or 15 years and I actually camped overnight for a couple of nights in one of these things and a hammock. That's all I did back in Washington state. I actually slept outside in a couple of days. I used my uh, uh, Hennessy, I think was my hammock, and uh, a little tiny like, uh, um, uh, kind of like a cover, but I slept in this and I slept in my clothes. And it got like, you know, 35, 40 degrees at night. And I slept in this for two nights just to try it out. Wasn't very comfortable, but I survived and it was actually pretty decent considering what other alternatives did I have. Um, hot cold, pa uh, cold packs for sprains and stuff like that. That's kind of a no brainer, just something simple. I got a couple of them in here. Works out pretty good for that. Uh, what I have in here too is again, I've got some things like uh, antiseptic pencil. I got my finger splint in here. I have some Purell. It's like a hand cleaning gel. Uh, I've got my gloves inside here, my latex gloves or my, my not latex, but the uh, whatever they call them again. I have those gels in there. What I have in here is what Ben doesn't also have. This bag here has uh, antibiotics, it has, and, and that will go into uh, Joseph Alton's book here, this book right here. It talks about fish flock, fish box and fish flocks and all this other stuff. Um, Ciprofloxacin, and um, the same company that makes stuff for your tropical fish, make it for human consumption. They label it differently, they make the pills look differently. It's the exact same ingredient. 
do the research, don't trust me, look into it, but I've got some right here. I also have some antibiotic creams, I have some Tums and the aspirins. Um, uh, when I was damaged in the Marine Corps, um, and even if I have allergy issues or something, I have a spare inhaler right here. Uh, we have some anti-diarrheal medicines, but more importantly, what a lot of people overlook is activated charcoal. In the military, they would teach you that if you end up with a stomach problem and you got some kind of bug or virus or you have stomach issues, if you start throwing up, you're gonna get dehydrated really fast. They taught us that if you make a campfire, you take the black charcoal that's from the wood, not the ash itself, but the black charcoal, and you grind that down, try to scrape it with a knife, make it into a paste or mix it into some water and drink that down that activated charcoal is going to attack all, attack all the bacteria and all that bad stuff in your gut and it's going to help subside everything so you're not going to be nauseated, you're not going to be thrown up and it's actually going to help you with diarrhea as well. So I went to Wally World and I bought one of these. We've got three or four of these. Got one in a house, I got one in my kit, I think we got one in another first aid kit. But activated charcoal, you can't go wrong with it. Kasha you didn't even know about it at the time, nor did the kids. And I taught them about it, they took it, and sure enough, as soon as you take it, you take one or two of them, and within the first few hours, all your nausea, your nausea will go away and you'll be good to go. Gauze, as well as Quick Clot. Quick Clot is for more of a puncture or shock, keep profusive bleeding. It'll help pack that and take care of that until you can get the first aid. Uh, and then here is, I got some chapstick, some uh, hand lotions, but more importantly, I got my little burn kit right here, okay? So this is, again, for the burns and everything. And then my Sammy, my little splint right here, my Sam splint, I've got right there. So let me pack this up and I'll get you to the next two kits. I just wanted to show you this, guys, real quickly. This was the old Pelican case that I had. As you can see, it's a stark contrast to that size right there, as well as this Apache right here. Uh, the reason why I did, I shrunk down, I shrunk these kits down is simply because most of the time it's just going to be me and Kasha now. So I don't really need this big case anymore. Uh, not really sure what I'll do with it, but it does have some things inside it. It suited me well, it worked really good. Oh, matter of fact, here's, here's one of your other little options if you want to just start out with people. You want to give a gift to somebody. One of these little pre-made kits is perfect. It gives you a little list of everything that's on it. I mean, it's super simple, especially if you got like a, maybe your daughter is going off to school or something like that. I granted, I'd probably send Elle off with one of those bigger box, uh, bags, like the blue one, like my dad had, but you can go that route. There's Ben Sawyer, he's got to put inside his thing. This is the Dermoplast that's supposed to go in my kit. Uh, there's another one of those bivvies, Soul bivvies. We actually had four of them. Uh, I got one in there and then here's the other four, and that's because we were a family of four. That's what we did. We traveled with that kind of stuff. We wanted it. Uh, cold compresses, again, you can't go wrong with that. Just a simple little equate. These are from Wally World. Just grab one or two of these boxes and take a couple, throw one or two inside your kit. You can't go wrong, especially if you got children. Um, I mentioned uh, feminine products and stuff like that. One of the things that would affect women more than men, but for both of us, done the same, is urinary tract issues, cranberry. Now, a lot of this stuff you might think is not necessarily a first aid thing, but I'm kind of leaning, I'm kind of going from the boo-boo kit, like we were talking about this or the red one or the blue one, to more of a, I'm gone for a week or maybe a month and I'm traveling either by myself or with my wife or my family. And now we're gonna start moving more towards the preparedness situation. A lot of this, of course, can overlay from one to the other. But the larger you get, the bigger you get, the bigger case and stuff like that, and the more things you think you want to be prepared for in the future, in case there's any type of issues, you would want to have a larger case and a few more incidentals that you wouldn't take with you in a boo-boo kit. And one of them, again, is the cranberry like this for urinary tract issues. No different than having a feminine hygiene products or even a water filtration system where if we had an issue, uh, if we had a societal issue uh, where we live, it would be that bad. We have a cistern and it supplies the, the few homes that are here, thousands upon thousands of gallons of water. There's plenty of generators that help pump that stuff. I can go over there with a bucket of water and grab a couple of buckets of water and I'm good with that. I don't have to necessarily go through all of this 
to hunt my water down through mud puddles and those kind of things. Uh, but some of you might. There's some more of those plungers with the, um, the uh, IV type solution in that. And that's one of those Covan bands right there. These things here, again, are really good. We use those for Dutch when he had some wounds and stuff like that. Um, one of those essentials, it's an orange, like pullover raincoat kind of thing. Didn't really care for that. And then there's one of those little cheap emergency blankets here. A nondescript little thing like that. I mean, anything will work, but I would choose the other one or even a bivy like this versus these because these tear easy and they're not as a thicker material as something like the sole bivvies. And then we got a bunch more band-aids and then here's one of those masks when the kids are real little. Remember these things, guys? Yeah. <laughs> But uh, let me get this put away and I got one last thing to show you. Okay, the last bag to show you. Now, it's pretty big. It's bigger than the Pelican case that you guys just saw. And this bag used to be what we called off our turnout bag. This is what I used to carry my right ear in or my vest when I was on the rifle team. Um, I would put my vest inside here and I have extra mags inside here if I went off to training. This was my bag, this was my police bag. I've had this thing for 25 years now. Um, I got this when I was with Seattle PD and it's been great ever since. It's got good pockets both on the sides here that we store stuff in as well as the pockets you'll see up in front. Now just the cursory search. Uh, it's been a while since I've gone in this because Kosh and I built this bag and after we built it, this is our house bag by the way. This was when we lived in Washington State, if there was an earthquake and we had to leave our home, this is the bag we're gonna take. This is the bag that sits in our house. This is the bag that sits, we have like a storage fit room for all our stuff. This is the house, get out of jail, get out of wherever kind of situation bag. This bag has more stuff than what most anybody would probably need, but I'm gonna show you what it was that we got. And again, it's all based on the book that Dr. Alton did and got us some ideas. Everything also is in larger size. It's not the little tiny bottles of ibuprofen or a little tiny bottle of aspirin. It's gonna be a full bottle, um, such as like this here, the iodine washes and such like that. We have this kind of stuff here because it's the betadine scrub and the iodine solution. This is the Greg and Kasha situation. Scrubbing down, cleaning your hands and all that kind of stuff. Cleaning off a wound if you've got a bad, if you've been shocked or you got a bad, uh, sucking chest wound or something, you're gonna be using stuff like this as also as well as cleaning a, a wound up really well. It's the medical people. They, they get cr pretty crazy with that kind of stuff. I've used iodine, but never at such an extreme. And I think there's something about iodine where how it treats the skin and stuff like that. And, and you use it for certain situations, but you don't wanna do it for long-term care. Uh, again, and can't, I think we might have bought like, uh, a pack of a hundred of these or something. But again, these are the uh, sodium chloride. It's just an injection. Uh, basically, they're used to put into uh, lines to flush the line out. But you can buy these, or at least you could. Um, it's basically purified water for the most part. It's saline water used to flush out a wound. You can use it to flush out an eye if you get something inside it. That's why we have it. Uh, back over here again, uh, like we have these little scissors and nail file kits and. Um, a uh, little, uh, um, the little, uh, what do they call it, hemostats and everything. We got all that stuff here as well as another pair of these big scissors. We keep all that stuff right here. This bag isn't necessarily for maybe me to provide first aid to someone, but it's definitely going to give someone the ability that might have a lot more uh, knowledge and skill than I do. They have something to attend to myself or someone else. Uh, again, another one of those pairs of scissors. Um, we've got the new skin right here, and I think some of this stuff just found its way in here because it's a small pocket. Um, sewing kit for stitching, if you have to uh, make a, you know, if it's a suture, a cut, or something like that, we have that thread. Um, big lid right here, it's a really good, it's like a, a 600 denier or so bag, works really nice. Um, some pens and stuff like that up here, and markers. Oh. <laughs> To tell you how bad, how much this backpack, or how, how fat, far back this bag goes, I have toothbrushes here that actually have a little kind of uh, light. It's got the little light in here. I don't know if you guys see them blinking. It's when the kids were little. 
but it's all hygiene. This is an entire kit of toothpaste, mouthwash, dental floss, and toothbrushes. Um, here we got some burn ointments, we have some uh, zinc in here, we have heartburn preventive medicine, some allergy pills, Tums, Johnson & Johnson baby lotion, Visine eye stuff, um, rubbing alcohol pads as well as hand sanitizing wipes, surgical masks, um, quick clot right here. Some of this, again, we ended up finding some of this and we just kind of throw it all in here like some extra finger splints. We got three of them in here. Um, Halls. I think we're gonna have to go through some of these. Some of this is a little bit expired, so we're gonna have to go through this. It's a good thing I'm doing this video. Um, this here was a little kit that I think I got from, I don't know if it was off of Amazon or something, I forgot what it was. But it's an entire kit of different types of scissors and tools and tweezers and uh, it's got a scalpel blades that you can attach to disposable blades that you can actually attach to the scalpel. We have things like that in here. Um, what I would ever do with that, I don't know, but you know what, I'm hoping that if I ever needed this, somebody else is using it or using it on me. Okay, so at least they're gonna be more knowledgeable. Um, these are the, uh, we got these a while back, it's the cold compresses, and some of these hold up pretty good, but this one, yeah, this one did, this one's good. Uh, it's a cold compress, and I think that was back when I did something with my ankle. Razors, again, it's just something to clean an area and such, if you had to provide some type of medical care more zinc, a bunch of quick clots in here. This is a, uh, a casting tape. We bought this because this actually, you can do your own cast. You could do your own cast with like for a wrist or something. That's what that's for. Uh, a big sand splint right there. These here are perfect. We actually had these for when we were potty training Dutch. We bought these and Dutch is 11 years old now. We bought these and uh, you would lay them out with some newspapers and they would absorb the, you know, pee and poo and stuff like that and uh, these are also used for medical stuff. You'll see them, they take stuff like this and they'll put it around your neck if you're at a dentist, they'll lay it down on an individual if they're doing some type of stitching or anything like that. That's what these are for, work great. Um, hand wipes, you can't go wrong with that, just for basic cleanliness. More masks, uh, the gauze, uh, diaper rash stuff, like I said, it's gauze and bandages, again, uh, feminine hygiene products, we have that. Um, what else we got in here that might be a little odd is stethoscopes. My wife threw her, one of her, this is I think her stethoscope that when she first went through nursing school. Um, she's got like three or four of them now, uh, but I think that was one of them. There's another SAM splint. Uh, we have a bunch more. Here's another one of those uh, dental kits. We got a couple of them in here actually. Here's one here and there's one on that side, as well as the emergency space blankets. One of the things I was a big proponent on is soap being clean. Bars of soap are perfect, especially ivory. Everybody, Dove and ivory, I mean, you can clean your hands, you can wash them. You can literally take a bath in a lake or anything like that. This stuff is so nice and easy. Now, granted, that's the old school of me. Nowadays, they've got so many new soaps out there that are super organic or anything else that you can use that if you had to use it and you're taking a bath in a lake or something or a river, you're not gonna be harming the wildlife. I'm not saying that you're gonna have like a family of 20s swimming in a pond, okay, and do stuff, but it does help nonetheless. Uh, again, a bunch of the bandages in here. This one here, actually, this is a whole collection of things. And this is actually needles and uh, um, uh, those disposable scalpels and stuff like that we have in here. I've got tape, I have red tape, red duct tape, and paracord. Um, what else might be a little different that some of you might not see? Again, more quick uh, quick clot. We got a bunch of that in there, more of the, the ice packs and uh, ankle brace and things of that nature. So like I said, we, we might, maybe we've gone a little bit above and beyond. Uh, we actually, I don't even see them in here and I don't know where they're at. Um, so here's another one. So here's here's a blood, blood pressure cuff and I wanna show you, well, I won't take them all out, but. We have two different sizes, and um, you might not think about it, but when you do blood pressure on an adult, like this, this is the adult blood pressure cuff. This will not fit around your child. So we actually bought a, a child one, and now this will fit Ella because she's smaller in stature, and this will fit some of your smaller adult. This is for your adult, the standard adults like me, you know, 170 pounds and 5'10", all the way up to someone that might be very heavy or some even obese. 
This is more for a smaller child or an adult like that. So having the two different sizes allows you to get the blood pressure. Now, will most people have that? Probably not, but we have it because of course my wife wanted to have that. She knows how to read those kind of things. She knows all about that stuff. That's her gig, that's what she does. Um, what I'm not seeing in here actually, which I think I left them in the house now that I'm thinking about it. Um, we actually have uh, uh, collars. We have two different size collars and for, you know, when they, you put somebody in a car accident or something like that and they, they keep you immobile and they put you on a stretcher and they put the, the neck brace, the collar around your neck. We actually have two of them. One is a child size and one is an adult size. Uh, we bought that just to have it. They used to be in here and I don't know why they wouldn't be. That's the strange part. I thought they would have still been in here, uh, but man, yeah, I'm not seeing, I got rubbing, you know, we got, we've got um, hydrogen peroxide. We also have this witch hazel, which is if you want to look it up, look up witch hazel and uh, you'll probably end up putting it inside your kit. Uh, more feminine hygiene products. I got a bag here of different types of gauze and coban wraps. So that works out good too. We even got hair brushes in here for somebody that wants to brush their hair. And we have more ice packs. So all this is telling me and that what I've learned is that we have to go through this and we're gonna have to clean this all out. And I also have to talk to her about, hey, what happened to our, what happened to our cervical collars? Because we did, we had two of them in here at one time. Uh, let's see here, what else do we have? We have another cat tourniquet in here. We got a sling, we have all, all super glue and um, whole bunch of suit, uh, hemostats and, and scissors and stuff like that we have inside there for everything you'd want a hemostat for me. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I got a mess. I'll clean it up, but again, gang, I wanted to share this all with you to let you know exactly what was going on and to get your juices flowing a little bit and start thinking. You know, everybody sits around and they think about, oh, this couldn't happen to me or this and that. and so on and so forth. But I just wanted to, you know, maybe get the juices going, get you thinking a little bit, you know, Chad's a knucklehead. I can't believe he has all that stuff. Or, oh my gosh, that's a pretty good idea. I think I want to have X, Y, and Z. I don't have any finger splints or you don't have a Sam splint or, hey, I don't have activated charcoal. And I gotta say, activated charcoal is one of probably the easiest things you can get a hold of considering you can buy it at all of your local, uh, like Walgreens and Walmart and Fred Meyers and Crozier's and Albertsons and what have you. So HEB, I'm sure would have it too for my Texas folk. So um, that's it. Oh yeah, and uh, it's a good read. I'll leave a link down below for that. Again, Dr. Alton's Survival Medical Handbook. Can't go wrong owning that. That might be your downfall if you get that book. You start reading, you're like, oh, I can't believe it. I should do this and that, and that. So that's probably why we ended up in this situation. And I don't think, we need any more uh, lighting up toothbrushes in here either, so. <laughs> anyhow, gang, I don't know how I'm gonna get this all back in the bag. How's it all get back in the bag again? Uh, anyhow, remember to like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Links and everything that I can find will be down below. Uh, thank you for all the support. And remember, what's the name? What are we gonna name that night? And are you keeping an eye on those codes? Did you see a code happen to pop up? I don't know, did it? <laughs> Have a good one. Take care.